On today's episode of P-Dubs Arcade Loft, we're going to take a look at the At Games Legends Pinball Control Deck. Alright guys, we're back and we're reviewing another accessory for your At Games family of products. Today, it's the Legends Pinball Control Deck. Thanks so much At Games for sending this over as a review unit. Happy to check this thing out and give you my thoughts on this particular product. Now in this video, I'm gonna walk you through the installation process as well as my thoughts on the product and the build quality and how this thing looks as an accessory on your At Games Legends pinball machine. Now the product does come with an instruction booklet. That's that purple pamphlet you saw there. Uh, however, it's a pretty easy process to follow in this video. Now this accessory does retail for MSRP of $200 through the At Games website directly. It's not sold through retailers as of yet. Taking a look here, we do have a pretty decent Sanwa clone joystick that's nice and clicky. This joystick does have a shorter stem than what you see on the traditional At Games family of products that all use the same joystick. This one's a little different. Taking a look at the buttons, you do have the same exact micro switches as well as HAP style buttons. But in this case, the button tops uh, are a little bit less convex, more flat than what you've seen on the other at Games family of products. And of course we have a trackball. This trackball does feel very, very similar to the existing trackballs At Games uses. Flipping the product over and taking a look at the underbelly, I was actually kind of surprised to see this clear plastic and it does feel to be honestly a very cheap plastic covering covering the main components. You'll notice the little white round balls on the ends. Those are the exciters. Since you're going to be replacing the existing apron area on your Legends Pinball Machine where existing exciters are installed, it's nice to see that these replacement exciters for the haptic tactile feedback are included and built in on this product, uh, which obviously leads to increasing the cost. That was the USB port in order to connect this to your pinball machine. And this little cable right here, that's for connecting the haptic feedback audio signal to the pinball machine as well. The new exciters do not have any branding or labeling on them. And taking a look at the joystick, you'll notice that it does come with the octagonal gate, which is nice. At Games has always been using octagonal gates on their multi cave designs. And you can kind of take a cruise through here and see that from a modding perspective, if you wanted to mod this easily with other uh, more traditional HAP style buttons and micro switches and things. So swapping out buttons, adding LED buttons, swapping out the joystick, things like that should be pretty simple. But you'll notice on the encoder board, all the existing ports are taken up. So you won't be able to plug and play a spinner in here. You might have to tap some wires and get really creative if that's what you're looking to do. From a quality perspective, At Games usually does put pretty good hardware in their cabinets compared to some other cabinets out there in the marketplace. So from a build perspective, I'm pretty satisfied with what I'm seeing. Not thrilled with that clear cover. Okay, let's show you how easy it is to get this installed in your At Games Legends pinball machine. All you need to do is use a screwdriver, Phillips head, and remove the three screws from the lock bar and go ahead and get your lock bar taken off. Nice and simple. Once the lock bar is removed, go ahead and take off the five Phillips head screws holding down the side rails. There's five on each side, so you're looking at a total of 13 little screws you need to remove. After you take off the lock bar and the two side rails, it's gonna look like this, and it's time to tackle the apron area very, very carefully, very slowly. Go ahead and lift up your apron area, and it's time to disconnect some cables. When you lift up the original apron area, there's two cables that need to be unplugged. The first cable is a little white cable, data cable, that's connected to the D-pad. So we wanna go ahead and pull that out. And then you'll see there's that red and black wire that's connected. You just have to pull back on the clip and separate it from the wire inside the cabinet. You'll notice inside your pinball machine is a bracket that is holding multiple wires screwed into the cabinet. You'll see that red and black wire that you just disconnected, as well as the USB cable ready for you to plug in your new pinball control deck, as well as one of the ribbon cables. First thing you need to do is unscrew and remove that white bracket right there. Once it's removed, you can go ahead and screw it back in if you want to reuse that white clear bracket to continue to hold down that ribbon cable nice and securely. But now you'll see that because I took it out, I now have easy access to the USB cable to plug into the pinball control deck as well as the red and black wire to plug into the pinball control deck as well. Now, of course, very carefully go ahead and uh, line up your new pinball control deck 
with your pinball machine. The cable, the red and black cable on the control deck is nice and long. You could pull that in there and go ahead and plug that into that red and black cable in the pinball machine, as well as take that USB cable, which has plenty of length on it, and go ahead and plug that into the USB port on your pinball control deck. Once you get your two cables plugged in, go ahead and just set it down like so. Make sure it's nice and centered. It's plugged in, you have it centered inside the apron area. Now it's time to go ahead and screw in all of your side rails, both of them, as well as your lock bar to finish off the installation. Nice and quick, took me less than 10 minutes. After I screwed in the side rails and I went ahead and I started to screw in and mount the lock bar, I kind of took a, a stutter step here because I noticed as I was screwing it in, that the joystick is nice and centered in the middle of the apron area, but you'll notice that that trackball is not. The trackball is closer to the bottom of the apron area. It's not centered. I don't know if this is probably an opportunity for improvement. I don't know if we, if there's a design reason it's not completely centered like the joystick is, but I just wanted to point that out. Um, in my opinion, I wish it was nice and centered just like the joystick, but that could just be me. As you can see here, the trackball is a little off-center compared to the joystick, but minus that, everything else is looking really, really good. I'm loving the low-profile design of the joystick and buttons. I think this looks great and doesn't look obnoxious. After you complete the installation, it's going to look like this, and I gotta say that black on black looks really, really good. Not a fan of that red arrow on the bottom of the trackball touching the lock bar. That looks a little off-centered to me, but that's my only complaint. Everything else looks great. And as you can see from the profile, everything blends very well into the cabinet. The black on black matches the black side rails and lock bar, black back box. Everything just kind of flows nicely together. It doesn't look obnoxious or anything of that nature. Although the D-pad that comes stock with the pinball machine isn't too shabby, it's so much easier now to navigate through the menus using that joystick. Uh, to go up, down, left, right through the menus, selecting games. And of course, you can use the A button now to select a game instead of the start button. I still have enough clearance for resting my hands on the sides and corners, edges of the machine. The joystick and the trackball do not get in the way. And when it comes to the haptic feedback, after testing some pinball games and testing the various levels of haptic feedback available in the menu settings, I'm not feeling any noticeable differences between the exciters included on this control deck versus the exciters built into the pinball machine. Everything pretty much feels the same to me. User experience may vary, and of course you have to go in and adjust all your different volume and haptic settings to your own personal preference. Which can be done while you're in-game. When you're inside a pinball game, just hit the menu button on the coin door, head on over down to the settings, and you can navigate your master volume for the master volume of the games, your sound effects volumes, as well as you can scroll all the way to the right and adjust the haptic settings. You can switch between very low, low, uh, medium, uh, high, and zero. So of course, it's up to you what you wanna use. Obviously, the higher you have it, the more feedback you're gonna get, the more your cabinet's gonna shake and rattle, etc. I usually just play on medium. I'll have a separate video coming out soon showing you how to get this connected after I finish testing to your PC, so PC builds and running PC games on your Legends pinball machine and using this as a controller with your PC. But in the meantime, testing the ArcadeNet games included with an ArcadeNet subscription, as well as testing add-on games, bringing your own games, playing them via a flash drive, I'm not having any concerns. The joystick, the buttons, the trackball, everything works maps correctly and is uh works the way it should so no complaints there i think anyone who got this for a hundred dollars on national owners day i think you're going to enjoy your purchase i think for a hundred dollars we're getting a pretty good value here the normal msrp is 200 i personally think that's a little bit too high if you haven't placed a national owners day reservation uh, i would recommend maybe holding off and seeing if you can get this the next time they go on sale all in all, it's a pretty nifty accessory for your At Games Legends pinball machine. Do me a favor, guys. Give me your honest opinions and feedback in the comments below. Give me a thumbs up on the way out. And as always, thank you for subscribing.